Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today it is cold and windy. Whew, sorry guys, I had to run and grab a coat. When I gotta wear a coat, you know it's cold outside. So, we are in Project Rec J right now to get out of the wind, but we're actually gonna be working on the police model XJ today. Yes, we're gonna try to start that thing. It is a DOA XJ, and I believe it's DOA because of a lack of spark issue. Now, we're in Project Rec J because over the course of the last week or so, I've been swapping out its ignition system components from Project Rec J to Project Police Jeep because I know everything in this works. It's a running and driving Jeep. Well, it starts anyway. So I put all the ignition system components from here to there, but I didn't do one thing. And that is the dreaded, the infamous crankshaft position sensor. Yeah. All right, while I'm warming up, let me catch up to speed. So last summer, my brother was driving the police model XJ home from work when he saw some smoke coming up from under the hood. He immediately pulled over and he observed that the overflow line was disconnected from the neck of the radiator. Now, this caused some coolant to spill out onto the radiator, thus creating the smoke. Now, he's not sure how much coolant he lost, and he's not sure if the vehicle overheated. He was able to get the vehicle back home to his house but the next day he tried to start the xj and it did not start it had that no spark issue now i said that it's probably a crankshaft position sensor your crankshaft position sensor lets your jeep know what position the crank is in it is basically a magnet and it detects pulses that are generated by notches in the flywheel if this thing goes bad it won't know what position the crank is in and then the pcm won't know which cylinder to send the spark to so he went out to AutoZone, got himself a new sensor. He put it in himself and it still did not work. Now at the time, I didn't realize that you could actually get a DOA sensor out of the box if they're cheaply made like crap from AutoZone or Amazon. You're gonna wanna stick with a Mopar sensor. And since we didn't realize this, we thought it could have been damaged from overheating. Now. When you overheat your XJ, you could have a blown head, you could seize your motor, a ton of horrible things can happen. So since he replaced the sensor and it still wasn't the trick, we started from square one. So uh, my father and I acquired the vehicle from him and uh, square one, we wanted to make sure the engine wasn't seized. So we put an 18 millimeter socket on a breaker bar. We cranked over the engine from the harmonic balancer nut in a clockwise position. It moved nice and free. So we knew the engine wasn't seized. So that's really good. Uh, next thing we did was a compression test. We put the compression tester on just like we did for my two door engine. If you want to see that, um, check out that video, compression test. Um, so we got good results results. We had good compression, we knew the engine was in good health, so that wasn't the case. Next thing we wanted to square away was the fuel delivery system. We put the key in the ignition and we could hear that the fuel pump was spooling up, so we know that the fuel pump worked. We also checked the Schrader valve on the fuel rail. It's got to be missing spark because we definitely have fuel. And just to make sure it wasn't a lack of fuel issue, I added five gallons of fresh gasoline in the police model. We got five gallons of the good stuff. I also grabbed a can of starter fluid, opened up the intake, sprayed some of the good stuff down in there, and it still wouldn't start. So that reaffirms to me that it is in fact a lack of spark issue, which is why I'm in Project Rec J. Over the course of the last week or so, I've been exchanging some of the parts of this ignition system into the police model to rule out all possibilities we know that this Jeep starts. So every ignition system component you could think of has been transferred from this Jeep to the police model XJ, except for one more thing, and that's the crankshaft position sensor. Um, but let's go ahead and we're gonna look at all the other components that I've checked out already. All right, guys, first thing I'm gonna do to this DOA police model XJ that I suspect does not have spark is I'm gonna check the fuses and the relays. I'm gonna pay attention to this ASD relay. That's the automatic shutdown relay. And what this does is it provides spark to the coil pack rail and it provides spark to all the fuel injectors. So if this is a bad relay, you're not gonna get any spark. So I got a ton of fuses and relays from old XJs. I'm gonna go ahead and swap these out. You gotta make sure all these are good. And if this is not the problem, we will move on. Whew, 
The sun has been battling some snow clouds all afternoon, but I think the snow just might prevail a little later. So I am 100% confident that it is not an issue coming from the fuses or relays in the power distribution center. Next thing to look at, we want to look at the camshaft positioning sensor. Now, if this goes bad, it could give you a no spark issue just like the crankshaft position sensor. Uh, to swap this out, really easy to get to. It's just these two little, I think they're seven 32nd little hex bolts. So you're just gonna unplug the connector, unbutton this. This little gray plastic piece comes right off. Put a new one on or your, your working one on. Make sure that that is good to go. Whatever you do, do not take off this bolt down here. That will loosen up your drive gear and uh, you'll screw up your timing. You don't wanna do that. If you mess that up, you'll have to reset this. You'll have to uh, index it with cylinder one at top dead center on the compression stroke. It's kind of a nightmare. Um, it's not impossible to fix, but <laughs> all you really gotta do is swap the cap. So avoid messing with the uh, drive shaft itself in there, the drive gear, don't don't mess with that. So uh, I did that, I checked mine, I know that is good. Next thing I'm gonna do, which is really easy to swap, is the coil rail. Now again, it's just these four little bolts, this coil rail pops off and unplugs back here, there's a little plug back there. I swapped this out already, so I know this works, this runs, This coil rail was actually on the police model so this is good to go uh, next thing you're going to want to check is you're going to want to check the computer now i swapped the computer out i had a feeling it wasn't the issue because usually if you have uh computer problems it should say uh no bus that's usually what i get when i get a bad pcm the uh the little mileage the odometer reads no bus so that's not good at that's usually indicative of a bad pcm that's not the case this time now you also may throw a p320 code and of course that's a dead giveaway that's your crankshaft position sensor error code now i didn't get around to checking this for a couple of months by the time i did the battery was long dead and we replaced the battery and we didn't try to start the vehicle so we didn't actually get a code until way after i already diagnosed that it's probably the crankshaft positioning sensor so yeah check your codes if you have a check engine light of course, you're going to want to make sure you have good spark plugs, but I know one bad spark plug isn't going to make the whole engine not run. So uh, it's not a spark plug issue. If you want, of course, go ahead and change the spark plugs when you replace the coil rail. If it makes you feel better, it's an easy job. Go ahead and do it. I got a spark plug video. If you want to see it, go check that out. And finally, last but not least in the ignition system would be the crankshaft position sensor. Now that is way down in there, and it is really hard to get to. There's one bolt right there. The other one is blocked by this little, uh, that's a little clip um, area. You clip on your, your harness to that thing when all is said and done. And they are two 11 millimeter bolts, and they're facing the back. So it is just... A real pain to get to. So why am I gonna bother taking this out? Well, I know Project Rec J, it starts, and it's an automatic of the same year. So uh, I think this will be a good vehicle to swap with. Let's just uh, double check. Yep. So we're gonna try to get it. Dang it. <laughs> Oh. All right, guys, I've been in here for about 10 minutes and it is extremely hard to negotiate a tool in here. I found out that this 11 millimeter box wrench is the best way to get at it, but this bend is just not quite steep enough. So I think I'm gonna have to sacrifice this 11 millimeter. I'm gonna heat it up with the torch on the vise, give it a good bend, and that should help me get to it. If you're wondering, why not just try to get to it from underneath? Well, let's take a look. And here we are underneath the vehicle. Now, you can see it pretty good here, but you have to get around all the linkage junk for the transfer case. And 
we got the drive shaft in the way so it's definitely a challenge to get to from the bottom as well as the top i guess i could string a bunch of attachments together if i have to but i guess i'll cross that bridge when i get there yeah see that's why we gotta go in from the top i think that's our best bet and if you guys want to see a really big tease check this out here is the part we need right here crankshaft position sensor uh watch how easy this is to take out ready real time no camera tricks Ta-da! Crankshaft positioning sensor. So why can't I use this one? This is the manual XJ that I pulled from the two-door, so I don't want to risk damaging this or having it not work, going through all that trouble. So I'm just gonna keep it out here. And you know what? When I pull the one out of the automatic, then we'll compare it. Let's go bend a tool. Well, hot damn, boys and girls. Look what I found on my workbench. <laughs> another crankshaft positioning sensor and this one was from beach jeep it was from the automatic 4.0 that i pulled out of the engine before we chopped that baby up and let's compare the two all right here we go guys two crankshaft sensors let us compare the one on the right is from the manual two-door and the one on the left is from beach jeep which was automatic here we go let's take a look at the thickness over here this is identical and the thickness of this also identical we got the same exact mounting holes for the bell housing and it's even got the same contour the plug is coming out at the same spot and we'll take a look at the plug ends and once again they are identical let's take a look at these part numbers now, they are basically the same, 560278668AE, and the manual is AB. Could be just a variation between the years. So, let's compare the shaft length. And man, these look identical. 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 I think it's safe to say that a manual crankshaft positioning sensor will fit in an automatic and vice versa. So, <laughs> we are gonna bring both of these to my police model, but I'm probably gonna end up using one from a 2000-2001, considering the ignition system changed from distributed to coil pack for those years. I wanna keep it consistent. Of course, I'm still gonna have to bend up this tool. Uh, all right, I hate to destroy a good tool, but as long as I have XJs, I'm not destroying it, I'm just transforming it into a crankshaft positioning sensor tool. And I'm gonna have XJs, so this will probably be needed in the future. So, let's give it a shot, see what we can come up with. There we go, guys. A crankshaft positioning sensor tool. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if we can get in this bad boy. Oh yeah. She's on there real nice. There we go. It still ain't great, but it is light years better than the way it was before. So now we'll be able to turn this bad boy off. So I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> on Rec J. Rec J, you get to keep your parts once again. So, we're gonna take this little tool and we're gonna go try it out on the police Jeep itself. All right, here we go. Police Jeep. Uh, fender swap came out good, nice and straight. The other one, well, it was hit by a deer and this door is the next to be replaced. Uh, I don't wanna talk about what happened to this door. <laughs> That upsets me, and it was my fault. So, let's dig in. All right, guys, let's try to fire it up, show you what we're dealing with. Yeah. 
Yep, we got that all day long, or until the battery dies. And you can see this crankshaft sensor is brand new. Look at how nice and shiny that is. But uh, unfortunately, it's AutoZone, and I think that might be the culprit. So I'm gonna reach down in there once again. Wish me luck. All right, I broke it free. <laughs> I got both hands down here. I'm indexing it with one finger and I'm spinning it with the other hand. And I'm just passing the wrench from hand to hand, sliding this back and forth, going maybe about, I don't know, a tenth of a turn at a time. It's pretty pathetic. So one of the reasons why these sensors go is, well, because they're sensitive. And <laughs> these XJs overheat, and the sensors are sensitive to heat. So when these things get really hot, they have a tendency to blow these crankshaft sensors. And I think that's what happened to this Jeep. I don't know if my brother overheated it per se, but he says he thinks it was running hot and he says he was a little low on coolant. So that's, it's a possibility. It's always, uh, it's always a bad day when your 4 O's overheat. And uh, it's, it's unique when you have a manual because the manuals, manual transmissions, they don't generate as much heat as this automatic transmission and uh, and manual guys let me know if you've ever had to change your crankshaft sensor I bet not a lot of you have I think it's mostly a automatic problem I tell you I could not have done this without bending this 11 millimeter uh -huh. that was that was the key right there how it's many not... of these did you have to do <laughs> sensors yeah. Oddly enough, I've only changed these when I had the engine outside the vehicle. Oh, so that's the best way. Huh? Yeah, this is uh, the first time I've wow. had to reach down here with my hands, and it sucks. <laughs> All right, we finally broke her free. I got the one that's closer to 12 o'clock with my little uh, modified tool, and uh, come on out, Dad. <laughs> We got the one that was around the 12 o'clock position. <laughs> hey, show them the tool. <laughs> yeah, we snaked that all the way up to the bell housing and got the other one. Let's pull the sucker out. That was really difficult. I just unplugged it. And, whoo! We got it. Oh yeah, that's the brand new one. And it's snowing, yay! <laughs> we got the worst possible conditions for the worst possible part. That's Jeep life right there. Jeep my life, guys. Jeep my life. <laughs> All right, so this is the sensor I just pulled out and notice the two holes up here. This is the, uh, the AutoZone generic type. Look at this. Doesn't even have a serial number printed anywhere on it. I don't trust companies who don't have the confidence in their products to put their serial numbers on it. So this could very well be a DOA sensor. I uh, don't know how exactly to test it. I'm sure there's a way you can, but by the time I figure it out, I'll have this sensor in. This is the sensor from Beach Jeep. It's a 2001 automatic, and I'm gonna go with this one. It's got the serial number printed right on the back. And yeah, I'm going with this one because I don't want to change between 99 and 2000 because those were the years they switched from the different type of ignition so i'm going to stay consistent with that again going with the 2001 and uh i think i have better chances of using an old mopar one that works than uh, a doa one from autozone all right let's get it in all right so back on my stool now i'm six two six three with some boots on and this has got a three inch lift on 33s. So if you guys are tiny, definitely gonna need a stool to get up here. Uh, I'm turning it, You're turning it. Good. by hand with okay. my fingernail and the side of my thumb. And I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I got grease under my fingernails. Ah! That's the worst. 
never comes out. I hope I'm in the right hole because I've just been spinning and spinning. Uh -huh. Is it? No, I wasn't in the hole. It's supposed to be a plastic shield that guards things from falling into the bell housing. Oh, gee. What the heck? It's not here. I'm feeling... Oh, damn it. You mean it fell into the it bell? It fell into the bell housing. You're kidding me. Here's a public service announcement I never thought I'd have to give you, but here we are. So. This crankshaft positioning sensor is covered by this little plastic piece. This piece is very important. It prevents things from falling into your bell housing. I did not know that the police model XJ did not have a cover. In fact, the bolt I was trying to hand thread in fell right into the bell housing all the way down. And that's not fun to recover. So that means now I'm gonna have to take off this bell housing shroud it's just five little bolts, uh, shouldn't be too bad. Then this thing will just slide right out and then we'll be able to get inside the bell housing, recover our bolt, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this baby back on. I'll make sure I get the crankshaft positioning sensor on first before I put this back on this way. God forbid it falls again. I should have easy access to pull it out. Now where's Dan? Oh, oh, there he is. Hold on. Hey, come around the side. <laughs> All right. Oh, there he is. Hey, how's it going? I found it. You kidding? There it is. Right at the bottom. Fell all the way down. So, I guess we'll just have to fish it out with a magnet from the, from the starter hole. Oh, I got it. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, hallelujah. I need a nap. <laughs> and here we go. Here's a look at the elusive crankshaft position sensor bolt. Look at this, baby. This is a specifically machined bolt. It's got this nice collar. This is a specific length, and it's supposed to give you the proper distance and mounting location for your sensor. And the factory service manual says do not replace this bolt with any other bolt. You must use these. These nifty little specific bolts. Very cool. Very cool. All right, guys. This flexible magnet on a coat hanger thing, <laughs> this was the hero of the day. We got our bolt back. So I'm going to put that in the pocket. Hold on to this. What a miracle. And uh, we're going to put this back on now i don't know the name of this part there's no part number i don't think but it goes around your crankshaft positioning sensor and this is a must-have so you don't do what i did so all right we're gonna clip this on place and then we'll get the crankshaft positioning sensor in Whew, what a day all right reach down in here clip it in all right guys that's what it looks like with that beautiful cover installed. That would have saved me uh, about three hours. What a nightmare. But now it's time to continue with the project at hand. Finally. <laughs> All right, guys. Believe it or not, this is the position I have to be in to hand thread these bolts. Oh my goodness. I got it though. I'm hand tightening the crankshaft positioning sensor bolts. Wow, it's working, it's working. Getting the last bit of torque on these bolts. And I don't know the torque specs, and even if I did, I don't think <laughs> we'd be able to, to work that out with a torque wrench, but oop, I guess that's tight enough. <laughs> All right, it is on. 
That's pretty tight. It's on. You got it? Yeah, now there's another one up there, right? Yep, I did that already with my special tool. Oh, yeah? Yep. Good to go. Let me just double check. All right. And not quite on. There you go. Oh, push it up a little more. There you go. Now it looks oh, like yeah, it's. Yeah, that's tight. All right. Awesome. Now we got to put a starter back in. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Just going to reconnect this battery and hopefully this thing will start. <laughs> Putting on an old, used crank positioning sensor to replace a new one. We'll see if it works. Stranger things have happened. In the, uh, in the world of Jeep on this channel, you guys know that. So, here we go, that is on. Let's give it a shot. All right, here goes nothing. First start in about six months. Moment of truth. Cross your fingers, guys. Yeah! Started right up. All right. That is great, guys. That is great. Yahoo. Yahoo. Wow. Purring like a kitten. Ooh smell the gas <laughs> oh that's great news great news Ugh. all right guys gotta wrap this up quick because I am freezing we are actually sitting in a Jeep that hasn't started in six months it was a DOA XJ and she started after we replaced the crankshaft positioning sensor now I know that everything works I could go ahead and test all these crankshaft positioning sensors. <laughs> no way. I'm just kidding. That job is a nightmare to do. Uh, this little tool I made made it a lot easier to get up in there. And also, of course, the help of a buddy or my father to get up in there with that long extension to get that 11 millimeter socket on there. That was pretty cool to do. Um, so thank you dad and uh yeah that's it guys never thought in a million years i'd have to take off the plate to the bell housing to get to a screw i dropped in there i can't believe that that's that's insanity i didn't even realize that there was sorry running a little rough but that's the first time it's ran in a long time but yeah i never thought i'd have to get up in there to pull out a drop screw that little cover on the back of the bell housing on, on the top of the bell housing behind the crankshaft positioning sensor you, you got to have that or else you will drop a screw in there so make sure you have that part again there's no part number you just got to feel for it I didn't even realize I was missing it when I started to thread the screw in with my fingers so I'm glad uh, glad I was able to fish it out if not it would have been a nightmare trying to pull the transmission but oh, don't even want to think about that. I'm just so stoked that this Jeep is running. Uh, other things to think about, crankshaft positioning sensor. Yes, you can put a manual CPS in an automatic. They are identical, so uh, don't worry about it. At least they are for the 97 to 01 XJs or um, the AW4 transmissions and the AX15 transmissions. They do take the same sensor. Uh, other than that, guys, um, Grab a buddy, stay warm, and uh, the job shouldn't be too bad. So, uh, again, I'm freezing, so I'm out. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, guys. She's a driver. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I told you we were getting snow. <laughs> yes.